Welcome to Mediocre Gaming, and today we're playing Destiny 2. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and salutations. Today, we're the Warden of Eyeballs. Let's get to it. The Warden of Nothing is one of the four Forsaken Strikes. Now, what do we need to do in order to attempt to get that score, that 100,000 and get the aura that goes with it. So what we're going to do is set up the challenge card, the Five of Swords. If you don't have a Five of Swords, you'll have to buy one from Xur. And Xur is only available uh, on the weekend, basically Friday through Tuesday. Now you go into your Five of Swords and you're going to set up the Singe for whatever strategy you are going to employ. Uh, I'm going to talk about what we used, uh, but depending on what you want to use, you can change it up to whatever. So if you were going to run Nova Bomb and uh, Tractor Cannon, you would do Void Singe. If you were going to use some Arc uh, subclasses or power weapons, you could use the Arc Singe. Uh, I used the Solar Singe. Now that will increase damage of solar sources from every direction. So all your solar weapons and abilities and all the enemy's solar weapons and abilities will all do more damage. Run also Extinguish. So if everyone on your team wipes out in a respawn restricted area, you'll get sent back to orbit. Use that one because it is a big multiplier booster. And if you all wipe out in a respawn restricted area, you're going to have to restart from the beginning anyway because you're going to take a big hit on your score. After that, Blackout. Blackout is the second biggest multiplier booster, so we're going to use that. Now that will disable your radar, and enemy melees do a lot of damage. So it's good for multipliers. It is a little bit dangerous because you have to keep track of where all your enemies are visually because you can't rely on the radar that's not there. Also, the third highest score multiplier is Match Game. Shielded enemies take less damage from non-matching damage types. So if there's an enemy with a solar shield, they're going to take less damage from kinetic weapons and energy or power weapons that are not solar. So even using your super is going to do very little damage against an enemy that has a shield of a different type or a different element. So instead of match game, you could use attrition or momentum or something else, but those do not give you as high of a multiplier, so it'll be more difficult to hit the score if you do that. On the other hand, using match game may take you a little bit longer because you may not have the right setup in order to do it. So if you're going to use match game, make sure at least one person has a different energy weapon type than everyone else. So in our case, we use the solar singe and all of our power weapons were solar. So energy weapons should be either void or arc. So make sure at least one person has void, at least one person has arc, and then the third person can be either one, depending on what you have uh, highest. And then your subclass would be the opposite. So if you had void energy, weapon then you would have an arc subclass or vice versa 
because this was the strategy we used. We all had solar singe and solar power weapons, and then we had other abilities, subclasses, and energy weapons to, you know, cover the gap between everything else so that we wouldn't be going into a fight uh, without a way to damage shields of a different type or not very well. Uh, because if you have only void energy weapons on all three characters uh, of your fire team and you have an arc or uh, I should say a group of arc shields in your way it is going to be very difficult for you to take out those guys it will take a very long time and a lot of bullets in order to take them out so make sure you have at least one person on your fire team with a different type of energy weapon than what the other two are using if you're all using void energy weapons and you run into arc it's going to be very difficult for you to take those guys out likewise if you have all arc energy weapons and you run into void shields it's going to be very difficult to take out just something to keep in mind now the last part is one that is going to be very very dependent on your fire team and that is power handicap the nightfall is at power level 540 so whatever your power is you can use the power handicap to bring your power down to 540. So if you are at 540, you'll have no power handicap, or you shouldn't use the power handicap. If you're at 580, you can have a 40 level power handicap. And like I said, whoever is your lowest player on your fire team that's what you're going to set your power handicap to. So your power handicap is going to be based on whoever is the lowest man on the totem pole. So if you have one character on your fire team that is 580, then you can do a 40 and everyone else is 585 or 600. They'll just make those people that are higher uh, make it a little bit easier but if you're at 540 or you're all at 540 or close to 540 535 to 545 you're not going to have anything uh, now it will make a big difference if you're closer to 540 versus closer to 600 because even though each level of power handicap doesn't add very much to the score when you're talking about 10 20 30 40 60 on the power handicap it does actually make a difference so if you're closer to 540 it'll be more difficult to hit the score than if you're at 600 unfortunately that's just kind of the way it goes all right so into warden of nothing Oh, and as a side note, a Warden of Nothing is the nightfall where you can get the Warden's Law hand cannon. It is a kinetic weapon. Uh, it has a quadruple tap perk on it, which is, of course, exotic to itself, which if you have four precision headshots, then you get two rounds back in the chamber instead of three, hat, uh, three shots. Precision shots give you one with the triple tap. It's an aggressive archetype hand cannon, so it hits hard. And that is the Nightfall exclusive one for Warden of Nothing. Now your strategy while you're going through here is whenever you get into a group of adds, you're going to want to take them all out. When you're going for score, you want to take out as many 
enemies as possible, but you'll also want to keep an eye on the time. When you're going for score, time is your worst enemy. So even though you may have a good multiplier going, once you hit 15 minutes on the time, your score multiplier is reduced or eliminated depending on what it is. So, Important time's target. not your ally, and once you hit 15 minutes, you're going to start to lose score. Now, depending on what your multiplier is, it may go to zero or it may just go down. By the time you hit 20 minutes, it's going to go to zero, and if you're not over the maximum time or the maximum score, you're going to have to restart. So having knowledge of what is going on, where and where enemies are at is going to help you out and knowing how far you have to go in the strike. Now, even though you may not have the time, so you're getting close to 15 minutes and you're not at the end yet, don't give up yet because as long as you're over the score, you do have a little bit of a buffer to finish it out. So most areas you're going to take out every enemy and you're going to want to do it quickly. So at the beginning, you don't have a whole lot of choices between what you want to do. If you came into the strike with full ammo, then it's going to help you out. Uh, you're going to have some choices between what weapons you can use. If you do not have full ammo, then what are you doing in the nightfall? There are ways to get full ammo, and I do recommend uh, doing one of those. So in other words, don't play a Crucible match and then go directly into the nightfall. Now, once you get into the nightfall far enough where you are able to use your super so after about three minutes have passed depending on what your armor perks are you can start using your supers and you'll want to coordinate with the other two fire team members so when you get to a group of ads one person can use their super and if there's shielded enemies which there normally is in the group the other two people are going to take down the shields that way the person with the super is not wasting their super just trying to take out the shield so one person use their super everyone else take down the shields so that when that person is using their super they can take them out a lot faster now when that person is done with their super there will be orbs on the ground everyone else if they have their super it's not going to help them uh, if you don't have your super then obviously pick them up and get that boost and you'll have your super more than likely. So then when you get to the next group of enemies, the second player on your fire team can use their super and then they can create orbs. Same thing if there are enemies with shields, the people that are not using their super should work on taking those shields down. Now in Warden of Nothing there are a lot of trains that are going by at different areas. There is a cadence to them so you know about how much time you have before another one goes by. So do pay attention to that because that would be a, a needless death and resurrection on your team. And having one player down means that much less DPS. 
So avoid going down if possible. Mines, yes. or but more than likely it will happen at some point. So try to avoid it, but do your best to not go down. And if you do go down, pick up members on your fire team that are down when they are available. There is a 10 second window where it is kind of a cooldown where you're not able to pick them up and then after that time anyone can pick them up. So continue on for 10 seconds then go pick them up. Now when you get to an area where you know there is a mini boss do try to keep someone available with a super so that you can quickly take out the mini boss and move on. A lot of the mini bosses are gated activities where you have to take them out before you can go any farther. Take them out, make some orbs so that everyone else on your fire team can build up their super that much faster and then move on. And that's pretty much it. Stay alive if you can, if you can't, if you're the last member on your fire team, uh, if you're in a position where you can pick them up safely, do so. If not, then you'll have to hang back for a few seconds until they can respawn. Keep an eye on your time, kill as many ads as possible. And when you hit that 15 minute mark, you will hopefully have a nice cushion of points so that if you are not finished, that you're able to lose some points and still meet the score minimum. Uh, oh, one more thing. Uh, one of the enemies, they do provide a good score boost, but they are also very difficult to kill. They will be shielded, so just using a super isn't enough to take them down. You will also need to take out their shield. Below. It calls to you. Yes. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to ring the bell before you leave to be notified of all future episodes as soon as they go live. And thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And we'll see you next time. To that warden servitor put a whole prison in front of you just to keep you away. And you survived. <laughs> That's messed up. <laughs> Looks like the trickster left you a present. I always hated her. <laughs> but she made me laugh. You're in the prison mainframe, the crazy servitor's nest. Buckle up. He's got some grizzled veterans with him. An old friend is here. Judgment at her. Strategist. Aruku. Okay, I'm making a mental note never to piss you off. No hostiles on tracker. I'll bring the ship into transmat range. Hey, uh, I might be looking for someone to watch my back one of these days. To bring some major heat to a gunfight. You for hire? I'll be in touch.